All right, folks, so yesterday I made a video on this side over here and got all this bolted up. And I couldn't quite get this bolt flipped the other way. It's supposed to be the uh, bolt going this way towards the driver's side of the truck and the nut facing to the inside of the frame. But other than that, uh, that's the only thing I couldn't really get exactly how you want it. But uh, this side's pretty much done. I got to go back, like I said, and torque all these to spec and uh, get that front one too. But anyway, uh, we pretty much just about got everything. And got our U bolts all bolted back up, so all that's straightened out. Like I said, I will replace them. But uh, this is where we're at right now, about four Dr. Peppers later. And I'm not sponsoring them, it's just what I like to drink. Most of the time I drink Pepsi, though. I'm really a Pepsi person. But oh well, I'm drinking Dr. Pepper. But anyway, uh, went ahead through a little bit of paint on the frame there, and because uh, once I bolt this new mount up here, you'll never be able to get to it again. But uh, well, this part of the frame anyway, because it'll be you know hidden. So I threw a little paint on there, and I am going to POR 15 the frame. Of course, we're going to do from about right here completely back, and uh, once we run our fuel line and our uh, front to rear brake line, get all that done. And buttoned up we're gonna set the frame back on but anyway enough about that so i got the rear mount I ended up doing it first and uh, of course it's just sitting on there for now haven't bolted it up yet threw some paint on the frame and uh went ahead and uh, make sure when you get them rivets out you gotta grind them flush so you can drive them through them holes there but uh gotta make sure and do that real good i was a little concerned at first because i mean it had a lot of scale and all that between the uh, original mount behind this uh, mount here in between the frame, but it was just, mostly it was just rust and dirt and everything else and undercoating and, you know, we got her off there. I just left everything attached and I didn't even unbolt it, but check this out. Let's see if we can do this here. Now, check that out. I mean, them bushings are shot. Look at that. I mean, it's not even unbolted. I ain't even touched it. Look at that. But that bushing is shot, so that's for sure. But anyway, you know, the new leaf springs, they already got the bushings pressed in, so that, thank God it saves a pile of time there. And, uh, and you can tell these things are sitting, look, I got a spider web or something in there. I'll get that out of there. But uh, this is what we got here, so I got everything off, and yeah, I just, I think it's easier this way. Don't even, if you're not going to reuse the mounts or the springs, I wouldn't even worry about unbolting all that. Just grind them rivets off. You got eight rivets. Just one, two, three, four there, and four back here. Just four right there, too. And I'll uh, just take your hammer and kind of hit on the side here, rock it back and forth, you know, like Grandma does in a rocking chair when it, you know, it's uh, storming real bad outside. And they rock that thing back and forth, and it'll pop right on off. There's, there's our original air. But yeah, like I said, we didn't we didn't even bother to uh, unbolt anything. Now, if you wondered about this, how I got this apart, I just took and cut the bolt. I mean, that's what I did. But, I don't know if you can see it or not. I cut it on off. I just cut it off flush. But, uh, I mean, look at this. Look. So we got slop in the front. And look. It's actually supposed to be a little crimp right here, somewhere through here. I can't remember exactly where it is. I think it's like right in here. It might be on back here. But it's supposed to be a crimp that crimps this together. And uh, there you go. That side's got one. Right there, but it's missing on this side too, so and that's why I was replacing it. This spring is actually worse, these are the original springs. There, there's the forward part number and everything, but uh, got FOMO code on there. I believe it might say forward six, one half dozen, another, but uh, anyway, but yeah, you can't even move this joint here. I mean, the shackle at all. Gotta be able to have a little give there, but like I said, the mouse really wasn't that bad. It's just this old factory rubber undercoating just 
you know, rust and scale, you know, this is part of your structural part of your vehicle here, so I don't really want to play around with that, but uh, that's what I did. I just cut them like an X, then I cut back through, cut a, took a cutoff wheel, cut them off flush, and then ground them flush. Took a hammer, did the old uh, rock grandma on the rocking chair trick, and you know, rock this thing back and forth, hit it here, hit it here. You know, get this thing where it was, you know, rock back and forth, eventually it'll pop right on off. And uh, pretty good. This side went a whole lot quicker. This is the first time, like I said, I've ever did leaf springs, and you know, ain't that big a deal. But uh, I kept everything in the orientation. This side right here is facing the driver's side. This side's facing the passenger side. The front of the vehicle's facing this way. And uh, I gotta measure these u bolts out. I'm not sure exactly what they are. I can't find any information on them. But a little side note here, I didn't mention this, but it's two things I don't wanna leave out before I do in this video, is make sure this pin right here, that's your alignment pin, lines up in that hole down here. That's gotta line up. And like I said, you have the short shoe of the spring, take tape measure measure from right here to the front, all the way up to this end here, or the center of it. And uh, you always have your uh, short front, not the uh, short front, but the uh, short part of the shoe. <sighs> I can't talk here. You have the short part of the leaf spring, the shortest length of it faces to the front of the vehicle and the longest always faces to the back. But I uh, just wanted to mention that. And I uh, wanted to make sure too, we are missing our uh, stops here. They're supposed to be rubber stops right here. Of course, they fell off long ago. But uh, it is supposed to be a little rubber stop there. And uh, so a little thing too, for I do forget, this truck did not have blocks under it at all. It would have had blocks that would have been sitting on top of that leaf spring. So this truck did not have spacers or blocks, you know, however you want to call it, you know, to lift this thing up a little bit. Some of the two-wheel drives from the factory, even your four-wheel drives have them from the factory a lot of times. But this truck, I mean, unless somebody took them off years and years ago, you know, this truck did not have no blocks whatsoever under them. If it did, you got to put them back. But anyway... But that's what we got, so we're gonna get this thing all bolted up here and I think we're gonna be about done with it. So I just go back and watch my videos there and I kinda was annoying myself a little bit when I was watching them because I'm trying not to do it now, but it's you know, breathing all this dust and dirt and scale and you know, chunks like that. Everything else, you know, and all that crap getting in my lungs and all that crap and uh, anyway i was watching the video and i heard myself go <laughs> you know sniffling like that and i was watching this like man it's freaking annoying as hell but i watched my own self you know watch it back on my own video there so i do apologize for that it didn't mean nothing bad it's just it was annoying my own self sitting there watching and just <laughs> you know breathing all that crap and just I'm not going to make any more videos like it. i got to do better. That's, that's ridiculous. But anyway, uh, hope this helps a little bit. You know, like I said, I never really make how-to videos. This is just how I'm doing it. And I think this is the easier way. If you're getting new springs and new mounts like I'm doing here, just cut the eight rivets. And if you buy new U-bolts and you know 100% for sure, sure they are correct, then honestly, I would just do it the fast way too. Just take cut off wheel on all four of them and just drop that thing right on out and be done with them if you got a torch you know how to use a torch that's even quicker but uh i mean that's the fast way if you ain't got access to a torch there just you know grind them rivets off make sure to raise the frame up so it takes the pressure completely off this spring first and i got a cherry picker there and that's how i did it that way it's no pressure on it and uh you know, that's the fast way to do it. But for now, I gotta reuse these U bolts. But you can take our cutoff wheel, just go, ch -ch 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 -ch, you know, bam, bam, bam. There's four right there. And, you know, four rivets right there. Cut them off, cut them off. Don't even worry about unbolting all that junk under there. Because if you got new leaf springs and new mounts, you know, it's just faster that way. You don't even have to, if you're real careful with it, you don't have to undo your brake lines or any of that, you know. Just make sure to chalk the, uh, 
front wheels up there. I got a block up under that one, and I got a brick under that one. That brick ain't really doing nothing, but I got a block up underneath that one. Because this thing, you know, it will roll away. Something I would do, you know, is I would always pull the bed off. It just makes it easier, folks. It really does. I mean, like I said, six bolts, get it off. It's out of the way. It's something else I would do, too. I see a lot of people not doing it. This is what I do because it doesn't hurt nothing. Take the dry shaft out, too. I mean, you don't really have to, but I took it out because, you know, I don't want to sit there and be putting pressure on top of that. Uh, there's a bushing in the back of this tail shaft on this transmission here on all of them. don't really matter what it is. And I don't want to be putting a bunch of stress and pressure and everything else when my hand's covering up. And, uh, you know, it's slip yoke be in there and, uh, you know, putting a bunch of stress on it and, uh, you know, something happened with the tail shaft, you know, bust the tail shaft up or, you know, something like that. You're not really putting a bunch of stress on it, but just take it out. I mean, it makes it easier. It's easier to get in and out. Look, look, look. I can do this. No, I'm staying inside the frame here. I mean, that just makes it a whole lot easier. I mean, just go on, take it, get it out of the way. And plus, you're going to have to, it's better to take it out anyway, because you might have to, you know, take this rear end, kind of push it back and forth just a little bit because sometimes you got to kind of wiggle this just a little bit to get that pin in there to line up so i mean it's really overkill you don't have to do that but i did it because you know i'm going to do all the u-joints anyway and the slip yoke but you know i don't want to be creating a bunch of stress up on that tail shaft there and uh you know screwing up that uh bushing that's inside there or, you know, putting a bunch of stress on the tail shaft all together and it breaking it off or cracking it or something like that. I mean, realistically, not really putting that much pressure on it, but, you know, just use a little common sense. Just go on and get it out of the way. That's what I did. But, yeah, that's a fast way of doing it. You got a cutoff wheel. As long as you got all your hardware, you know everything's right, you know, just come in here and grind these eight rivets off. You know, get the U-boys. Boom, pull it on out, throw the main new mounts and everything on, and he could be done. But I think that's what I discovered. But because I was trying to do it the hard way and you know, get everything unbolted because I wasn't sure if I if all the hardware and everything was correct or not. And of course, come to find out it was, you know, make sure all your bolts are the correct length and all that stuff. But, but anyway, that's what we got. I'm gonna get this thing a little more together. We'll probably have one more video on this and uh. We got, like I said, we got to run a fuel line and a front to rear brake line. We're going to run a 3 8 fuel line on the driver's side. We'll run it, bend it about a 90 right there and you're straight on up. And uh, I'll take care of that. I got to figure out how I'm going to vent the gas tank because all gas tanks are supposed to be vented. So you got to make sure and do that because you either got a vented cap or you got a, uh, you know, you got the return line. But we're doing away with all that emission junk on this thing, and you know we're completely getting rid of all that. We're going to get rid of this ABS sensor down here, speed sensor, whatever you want to call it. We're getting rid of all that stuff because you know we're going to eventually we're going to put a 351 Windsor in here, but I got a 302. We're going to throw at it for now, and they make a plate for this. Just take that bolt out there, and you pull that little speed sensor out. And uh, he can buy a little plate to block it off. But really, in reality, I mean, it is technically blocked off now. Just leave it the way it is. That's the poor man's way of doing it. But it'll all come back. And uh, I mean, if you really want to, you can take a cutoff wheel. If you don't care about that sensor, just pull this out, take a cutoff wheel, cut that uh, sensor out of the way. If you got your welder, just fill that hole up with weld and throw it back in there and bolt it on. It's all good. You just got to make sure it don't leak. That's the big thing. But anyway, still got to do the shock mounts and all yet. Haven't did them, but we're definitely getting there. I'm going to weld that hole up there. And we even got our new gas tank straps in there. i tell you, a nice little upgrade they started doing now is they finally, you know, got the bright idea of putting some kind of rubber on these, uh, that's actually rubber on these upper gas tank straps. So it actually snaps in there. So it's pretty nice. So now these straps won't rub a hole in the, you know, your corners of your gas tank. And uh, I'm sure it still will, but hopefully it'll 
prevent that and kind of, you know, keep from doing it as bad. But at least now they got some kind of protector on there. But these gas tanks, uh, even the front ones, just to be real bad about the straps, either rubbing a hole in it or, you know, it just, if somebody, you know, if they ever took them off and they put them back on, it's actually supposed to be a little piece there, like a fabric kind of material that keeps between the tank and the strap there that's supposed to keep it from rubbing a hole in it and all that. But, you know, somebody's done been in it and, oh, I'm going to throw this away and, you know, bolted everything back up. And then, you know, later on, find out that, you know, just from vibration, just from driving it, you know, rub a hole in it and that's what happens. But at least now, hopefully that'll help a little bit. But I used to take a little piece of fabric and just put it in between you know, the gas tank and the straps when I ever would put the tank back on. But, uh, that's what I used to do. But, uh, anyway, so that's where we're at. I think we'll end the video here. Get this old leaf spring out of here. And get a new one on. And I think we'll be good. Anyway, that's where we're at. But, yeah, like I said, if your truck does have blocks, make sure you get them you know, put back in order, same orientation and all that, you know. I like to keep everything in order because that way, this rear end is self-aligned, but that way, you know, it comes apart and goes back together the exact same way it comes apart. So that way it doesn't mess with the alignment because who wants to take all this back apart again? But uh, anyway, oh, there's the bolts there. So I gotta go in there and take cut off wheel and cut these nuts off here. That goes to the little rubber stop that used to be down here. Fell off. Or no room. But you like this truck for one thing though. It's got a rear sway bar. I thought that was kind of cool. It's got a front and a rear sway bar actually. I forgot about that. Anyway, thanks for watching.